Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today we're going to head back to the 41st millennium and we're going to visit Necromunda, which is Games Workshop's game of brutal gang combat out in the 41st millennium. Rock and roll. Now, if you're anything like me, you might have played the original, but for anybody who's getting into the new version for the first time, I'm hoping that this will be a way to sort of show off, you know, these paint techniques don't have to be fancy to make a really good looking gang. Now I've got here one of the old uh, Escher miniatures, the old metal ones, because unfortunately I'm broke and I haven't got the new box set yet. Oh dear. But the uh, the redesign is actually quite close to how these guys used to look, so the painting style ought to look exactly the same. Now I've opted, after giving her a black base coat spray, to give her a couple of thin coats of Mornfang Brown. And the reason for this is twofold. First off, it's going to give me a really nice base coat for all the colours that we're going to use. And second, if I miss anything, it'll be this dirty brown colour once we've got the wash over it. So nothing will really stand out. Now because we're painting, you know, for a gang, maybe only 10 figures or so, you can spend a little bit more time on these guys to really make them pop on the table. But we're going to stick to nice simple stuff, which means we're going to dry brush, we're going to wash, and for the most part, it'll just be some really simple brushwork. So let's get a look at the colours we're going to use. I'm going to start off giving her skin a base coat of Bugman's Glow, and then after that I'm going to give it a couple of thin coats of Cadian Flesh Tone. Instead of layering up, I wanted to have a slightly brighter skin tone to begin with, but putting Cadian Flesh Tone straight over the base coat isn't going to work so well, so we'll lay down some Bugman's Glow first. Then we'll do her hair, and Esha have a wide variety of outrageous hairstyles, so you can swap in anything you like here. I'm deliberately going for quite a warm tone with my guys though, so I'm going to use Mephiston Red in order to do that. Then any armor plates, so across her chest, uh, Jokero Orange is going to be what I'm going to use for that. You might choose to use yellow or something like that, but I like this orange. <laughs> I think it's going to tie in really well with the other colors I've got. She has a little tabardy sort of style flappy bit uh, <laughs> hanging from her belt, which is a good place to put some gang colors too, so I'm going to use Wag Flesh for that. Jokero Orange and Wag Flesh would be the two colors I'd swap between different parts on my models, but they would be on all of them, so it'll tie together as gang colors really well. Anything that I want to look like a dark grey, Ashen Grey is fantastic for that, so I'm going to do straps, um, you know, anything like that will be Ashen Grey. Black, for anything I want to be black, stick into my Vallejo Black for this one. Lid Belcher for any metallic bits I want to do, and then her boots and any leather stuff, I'm going to do Dryad Bark. Instead of that really shiny sort of blue leather, I'm going to go for a nice brown tone, and we'll see how that looks overall. So first things first, I've got my Bugman's Glow, and I've added just a little bit of water from the tip of my brush to give it sort of a creamy consistency coming off. So all I'm going to do now is get in there and start base coating her skin. Now if this should go anywhere that I don't want it, it's not a big problem at the moment because I'm going to paint all those other areas anyway. So what I want to do is just get a nice even base coat here. Take your time, go around, and like I said, if you do end up putting it anywhere it shouldn't be, at this point, don't worry about it. This is why we start with the largest areas of color. Then after the Bugman's Glow, on we go with Cadian Flesh Tone. And you will probably need two coats of this. The most important thing with all of these base coats is that they're even, and you're not getting any of the color beneath showing through. So take your time, go back around, and make sure that this is covering properly. Now that the flesh is applied, you can see how it's a nice even color, but it's pretty messy. <laughs> like I said, because you're going to paint over the top of other things, it doesn't matter if you're being a little bit overboard with these first couple of base coats. So what I'm going to do now is the first step tidying up the skin, and that's going to be to paint in her hair. So I've got my Mephisto on red, and watered it down just a little bit like I normally would. And here's a part where you're going to take some time, just going around and blocking in all of her hair with this. Now, this will be a little bit time consuming because you're going to get quite close to the skin. And if possible, you want to avoid uh, hitting that with it. So I'm going to take my time now, go around and paint in all of this outrageous hair. I tell you what, oh my goodness, she's got a lot of hair. <laughs> so like I said, take your time, make sure you're not missing anything there. 
But second, what we've got after that is any hard armor plates that she's got. So like on the backs of her gloves here, she's got these sort of um, built-in plates. And on her chest here, she's got these sort of, I guess, boot plate thing going on. But anywhere that you want to look like hard armored plates, get your Jokero orange now and start painting those in. Now you'll notice like with this sort of linebacker style thing she's wearing here, the murder sports bra, it's got like a laced up section in the center. Don't worry if when you're painting on your Jokero orange you get any on that because again we're going to paint over that later. So just spend your time giving her the Madonna treatment and make sure you're not missing anything which looks like it would be hard armor. Next we're going to mess with the color balance a little bit and we're going to put some wag flesh on this little tabard part she's got going. Now any of these little details, like she's got a bit of cord and some hanging tooth and what have you, you know, trophies, don't worry again if you get those, but if you can, just try and avoid painting them. It'll make it easier when we go in and highlight those later. Now I've got my Eschen Grey, and this is going to go on anything which I want to look sort of like dark, almost black cloth. It'll look quite bright going on, but it will darken down a little, and just make sure you're sort of taking your time around anywhere that you've already painted. Now anywhere that you want to have this darker sort of red leather look, get in there now with your dryad bark. Now this will look kind of flat first going on, if I'm honest, but once it's had its wash and we've highlighted it, it's going to look much nicer as a leather color. So get in there now and do anything you want this dark leather to be. Then any of that warmer sort of redder leather, we'll get in there with some Mournfang brown again and we'll just touch that up. Now anything that we want to be really, really strong black, get in there now. Then we're going to get our lead belcher and do in any of these metal details. Now, the reason why I'm holding her so cack handed like this is because it's easier here to start with the brush up close to somewhere that I want to paint away from. So where I've already painted her glove, I don't want to get metal on that. So I'm going to start up close to it and then pull my brush away. So I'm holding her upside down. For now, and then as that gets more difficult, I'll swing her around and away we go. But always try to be drawing the paint away from areas that you've already painted. At the same time, this is where you want to be thinking about any buckles or little details that you also want to be metal. So anything like on her boots here, for example, you know, you might want to switch to a smaller brush for this, but just a wee bit of metallic on those at the same time while it's all ready. Then last of all, I've got some Rackarth flesh just to do any sort of cords, straps, and this little tooth on the front here. And then after that, I'm going to fill in any gold details, the sort of brassy stuff. I've got Retributor armor for that. So I'm going to go around now, just quickly bash in all those little details to finish her off. And we'll see how that looks. There we have it, all those base coats applied. Now the best thing about using a single base coat from a pot rather than having to mix anything is that if you make any mistakes you can quickly just jump back over the top of it and fix them up. So there are a couple of places on here that I've actually had to go back, so like on her belt in the back here and around the fronts of her hands and what have you that I've tidied up myself. I did make a bit of a mess while I was painting. But that's the benefit where you can very quickly go back and make sure these base coats are all nice and smooth. After that we get out our good friend Agrax Earthshade. Now I had a terrible dream last night, I'm not even joking, my nightmare was I ran out of Agrax Earthshade. <laughs> so you want to keep plenty of this in your stable, you know, just in case. So I've got plenty of this on my brush, and now, same as always, just start bucketing it around the model. Now you want to make sure that you really work it into the recesses to make sure it's going to give you plenty of shading and depth there, but otherwise don't let it pull too much around any flat areas. So I'm going to go around now and just bucket this on, get her covered in Agrax Earthshade. Then we'll give her about half an hour to dry. That should be plenty. Now doesn't that look better? <laughs> With the wash dried, you can see how it's given us a nice deep recess shading and it's darkened down those colors a little too. She's still very clearly got that sort of psychotic color scheme that Necromunda gangers tend to favor, but without it being so bright as to be, you know, difficult to look at. 
So what we're going to do now is just a couple of dry brushes to do some highlighting, and then we'll do a little bit around her skin with an ordinary sort of edge highlight. Nice and simple stuff. We'll start off though, I've got my Dawnstone here, the dry paint. I'm just going to get a little smidgen of that on the end of my brush, and then on some old kitchen towel, I'm going to really work it in. And it's going to look as though I'm leaving almost nothing behind. I'm going to get it up close, as close as we can get it. All I'm going to do is very lightly at first, just flick this along the edges where I want that, that grey paint to catch and give me a highlight. And as I start to see how that builds up, I can get a little bit firmer with it and push down slightly. And then that gives me that nice, you know, highlight to the black, but very easily. I don't have to worry about whether or not I'm catching it at the right angle or what have you. So now I'm just going to very gently do the other side and I'll finish that off. Next up we'll do exactly the same thing but with Necron Compound on the Silver Gun. And you can be a little bit less sparing with this. This looks better if it is a bit shinier. And then we'll do the same thing again with some Astorath Red on her hair. And I'm going to use this as actually an old base brush rather than a dry brush that I've cut down because the bristles being slightly softer here will help me out as I'm applying around here. So I want to be a little bit more careful as I'm doing it to her hair. Let's get up closer there so we can see. But this will work best if you go back over and give it a couple of sort of passes on this. So take your time, be careful with this, but just dry brushing those highlights onto her hair. Now if you find there's any spots that you don't want to get too close with the dry brush because you don't want to mess up any other colors, get yourself a little bit of Evil Sun Scarlet and a detail brush and you can get in there closer and just paint in those little bristles there so that nothing looks out of place on her hair. Now you could leave it there if you were in a hurry or you just wanted to get her on the table you know, pretty quickly. But what I've got here is a little bit of Kislev Flesh, and we're going to very carefully get in and accentuate some of the shapes in her skin. So like under the rib cage there, we'll just get a little bit of highlight. We'll do down the side of her hip. And this is just a case of following around anywhere where you want those edges to stand out a little bit more. So on her face, for example, let's get in real close here. What we'll do is... I'll paint along her brow, do her nose, do her chin. Now these Citadel like women tend not to have very pronounced cheekbones, it's all very smooth faces so just a quick line up underneath her eye gives us that impression of a sort of sharper cheekbone there. Now you can go around and highlight as much of this as you like so I'm going to do a little bit more now around her collarbones and what have you when I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> now I've got here some Storm Vermin fur and I'm just going to highlight any of the ashen grey areas that we did earlier. Just a little bit of Gawthor Brown will help us bring back some detail to these dark brown areas. And you can be quite sparing with this if I'm honest. You really just want to accentuate the edges of everything. Just a little bit of Lauren Forest to do the creases in this here tabard. And then just a little bit of Troll Slayer Orange to make those orange details really pop. And there we have it, one Escher Ganger complete. And a darn sight simpler than some of the other things you'll see out there. <laughs> Really, this is all about making sure those base coats are solid when they go on. They are the most important part of any of this sort of painting style. From then on, it's really just picking what you want to stand out and highlighting it how you like. So a combination here of dry brushing and just a few edge highlights really helps those details along the edges stand out and for a really crisp finish. So I'm going to quickly finish her off, give her a base so that you know we can see how she'd look on the tabletop. But as ever, guys, if you have any questions about how this was done or things you'd like to see in the future, drop them in the comment box. You can always catch me on my Facebook or Twitter pages. They're linked down there too. And as ever, thank you very much for your time. And you guys enjoy the rest of your day.